Welcome to the course on computer architecture. I am Nachum Danzig. I'm a lecturer at the Lave Academic Center, also known as the Jerusalem College of Technology. And I am now going to explain how the MIPS architecture works in the multi-cycle configuration. There's a chip called MIPS, and I'm going to explain how the data path works in the multi-cycle format. Um, in general, we have to understand a few things. The activity of what we did in this single cycle format, we can divide now up into five stages or five cycles. In other words, we used to have for each um, uh, instruction, we used to have to finish the entire instruction, all the necessary requirements in one cycle of the clock. Now we're going to have up to five cycles of the clock to complete each instruction. Now, even though we will require more clock cycles now to do each command, we can possibly make each cycle shorter so the total time will be actually less than the single cycle. Also, before we learned in the single cycle format, since, since we only found out the result of each thing, of each um, element of the computer, we only found out its computation at the end of the cycle, and we only had one cycle, we had to, we had to have enough hardware elements to complete the operation with only using one, with only using one uh, hardware element one time. In other words, each uh, hardware element could only be used once. But now, since we have multiple cycles, we're still going to only use one hardware unit in one cycle, but we have maybe five cycles to finish a command, so therefore we can use the same hardware elements up to five times to complete a command or an, an, to complete an instruction. This will save us time. This will save us hardware. This means we'll have to use less uh, pieces. We can reuse, for example, the ALU or the memory. Before we saw that you had to use an adder and an ALU. Now we're going to just have uh, one ALU one memory access uh, operation. Now, the drawback of the multi-cycle is that we're going to have to save certain pieces of information in registers so that they can exist between cycles. Uh, until now, we had all the data at the end of the cycle, and that was good. But we, we had all the information we needed at the end of every cycle. We didn't need to save it to the next cycle. The next cycle was already the next instruction, and the, and the data that we had before was irrelevant. Now, since we're going to have several cycles, to do one instruction, we need to save the data from previous cycles for following cycles. Therefore, we're going to need, the only thing that can save information is a register. So therefore, we're going to need to add hardware. We need to add registers. So what we said before, we removed hardware. We removed certain kinds of hardware, like an adder. We're going to, have to add now registers. Um, now, as I, said, as I mentioned, there are up to five stages. Uh, for a command, the, the minimum number of stages to do some instructions will be three clock cycles. Um, and for all instructions, the first two steps are the same. Now let's look at the structure, actually, of the architecture, of, of, the, of the chip, in this, in the MIPS chip in this configuration. Now remember, the th if MIPS is a 32-bit processor. The 32-bit instruction is here. We notice that before, we had the memory being read directly into lines that went into the register file. This is the register file. We had lines directly connecting, bringing the command from the memory into the register file to take out uh, the registers if it's an R type, for example. Now, we have an intermediate box here. This is called instruction register. This is the first register that we have to add because we may, we're may we going to need to store the... the um, instruction over multiple stages of the execution of the instruction. So therefore, this instruction register will hold for us the instruction, like if it was an add or, or a subtract. All the 32 bits of the instruction will be stored in this register for as long as we need. On the top here is a little uh, com control line which tells it to either be writable or not. In other words, we can write the information on the first cycle, and then we can lock it with this by putting a zero on this line. The controller will put a zero on this line, and now 
even if we read memory a second time, it won't overwrite what was here because we've locked it. Uh, we're going to see that we need to read the memory in other cases. And when we do read that memory, it will try to go in here, but it won't be able to because it'll be locked by the zero here. But it will continue down this other path and go into the memory data register, which is another register which will store for us any um, other information that we want to read from memory. Now, this is our RAM. This is our four gigabytes of memory. And this is the, op this is the uh, element that reads that memory. And we notice we only have one. In the single cycle, we had two, one for reading the command and one for reading memory if it's a load word or a store word or a load byte or a load half. Um, but now we're going to reuse this same element also for reading the instruction and also for reading any data that we need to read for a load word or a store word. But when we do a load word or store word, the data will go into this register for us to access later. Also notice that the controller has become much more complicated there. There used to be only maybe six or seven, five or six or seven, I don't remember exactly, lines coming out. Now we've got a whole another set of lines because we have to, for example, control this register. We, we have other lines that we didn't have before. So it's a little bit more complicated, but it's actually fewer pieces. Notice we only have one ALU. We used to have another adder and another four adder for the PC incrementation. Okay, let, we'll come back to this diagram. Now let's talk about the first step in executing a multi-cycle uh, processor command. In other words, what we're going to do in the first cycle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the PC contents, which is an address of code, right? Our, our line of code, we have maybe a hundred lines in our program or maybe a million lines, but we've got to know where we are in the code. The PC is the pointer that tells us where we're pointing, which line we're at. Let's say we're on line number 50. So it's going to take that, the PC is going to take the contents of the memory at place 50 and, well, 50 plus wherever we started our code, which is usually 400,000 in hex. So 400,050. And we're going to transfer it to the instruction memory register. Um, the instruction is itself read from memory. Well, that seems to be the same thing. The instruction itself is read from memory is the same as it's transferred to the... Um, and we said the instruction will be kept in a temporary register, IR, which stands for instruction register. We saw that. The symbolic representation is the instruction register will equal the memory location as specified by PC. So, so far in the diagram, what we've just described is that in stage one, in cycle one, actually, in the first cycle, we've read from this memory into this register. Because remember, reading from memory takes time. But there's one other thing that happens. And that is we increment the program counter to the next instruction. Now, the PC is the program counter, and he is pointing to the current line. But so that we'll be able to be pointing to the next line, we already now have the opportunity to increment the PC plus four. Plus four because we have to go four bytes forward because each instruction is four bytes long. So we've just read four bytes. We need to read another four bytes. So we're going to do PC plus four. Let's see where that is in the diagram. Well, we see the PC went into here and told us what memory to read. Notice, by the way, this control line on this multiplexer is going to tell it that the address to read is going to tell it zero so that it chooses this line to go into address as opposed to choosing this other line, which is irrelevant. So the controller in stage one will have to be zero. But the PC data doesn't only go into this multiplexer. It also goes up this line, across, 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 and down into this line. Now here's another multiplexer, which we which is also new, and we have to have a controller on it, and this controller has to also be set to zero to tell it to choose this line. And this will come in here. Now there's a, it's going to add it to something. It's an ALU. It's going to add it to something. With what is it going to add it? Well, whatever comes in on this line. Well, this line is a multi multiplexer also, and this control line is going to is got two lines coming in, and it's going to select. Uh, one. So these two lines are going to be zero, one. So, so that it knows that this line one should go into is four. In other words, this means this four means that the number four is hard coded on that line. 
Anytime I choose one, I'm going to get this four coming through. So what's happening is four is coming in and the, whatever the PC is coming in, I'm going to add them together, get PC plus four. And it's going to go out into, well, two places. It's going to go into this as another register, ALU out, also sometimes called target, but ALU out, the output of the ALU. It's also going to go off this line to this multiplexer, and that's actually what we're interested in. It's going to go to this multiplexer, and again, we have a control line, and the PC source here is going to choose zero, and it's going to come all the way around back into the PC register, and that register will now be incremented by four, because we did this whole plus four, and it came all the way around. So we had to have one on this line, so the instruction should be written. We had to have... Also on these lines, notice there's two lines here on the memory. One is read and one is write. We obviously have to read from this memory, so the read line will be one, and the write line will be zero, and we'll be reading from this memory. It'll be stored, and so this, this will be, like I said, uh, one, zero. This will be, um, write will be one, it'll be able to be written. But on these multiplexers, it will be zero, it'll be one, it'll be zero, all this, the controller is pre-programmed to do. Now, since the, since the, uh, behavior of the chip in the first cycle is always the same, no matter what the operation is, I don't care. I don't need to look at the opcode. The first, I haven't actually read the opcode. The op, the out, the control, the controller is just hardwired to do those actions because it doesn't matter what the opcode is. It doesn't, he didn't have to read it yet. Um, so that's step one and we finish. So basically what we've done is we've read the instruction and we've incremented the PC. This stage is called the fetch stage because we fetch the instruction from memory. Now we have the instruction decode stage. And, you know, since one of the commands that we're going to be having to handle is re is an R type, we're going to do this. We don't even know if it's an R type yet, but we're going to do anyway the behavior of our type, which is retrieving the appropriate register values from the register file to the read data port and to the read data two port, read data one and read data two. This will be the cons of the RS and the RT. And we can denote it as A equals register. What is A? Let's go look quickly. You know, the, here, when we have these register file, we don't just read it directly into a multiplexer. We read it into a register again. These are two A and B registers are again um, extra registers that we need to have to store the data because at the end of the cycle, we still want to have this data lying around. So to go into this multiplexing. So we have a register here and uh, notice that the instruction at place 21 to 25, which is the RS, those bits of the instruction go straight through to the read register. That's the first register read and they go straight through to the read register here without any need of a multiplexing. And I'm immediately going to read those two datas. And the you know, these are five bits, five bits. These are 32 bits, 32 bits. The 32 bits at that location come out. The 32 bits at the second location come out. And I've got, I've read the two registers in cycle two. What else happens? Decoding the instruction and creating control signals that will accompany the execution of the command. So we have to send the signal this this has to go. Notice this line from thirty from twenty six to thirty one. That's the opcode. That's the leftmost section of the instruction. It goes through this line up here into the controller as op operation zero to five. Well, fine, it's zero to five bits, but they're actually bits twenty six to thirty one. Anyway, it's six bits of the operation code go into here, and now he's going to already be able to for the next cycle put out specific instructions on these lines based on what operation it was, on what opcode it was. So again, we are now deciphering the, or decoding the operation. We also, now we're going to do one other thing that, just in case, again, we still don't know what operation we're in. In this stage yet, we still haven't yet. We've just sent the data to the controller. He hasn't yet done anything with that data. So we're still doing consistent behaviors, as we said, the first two cycles are identical no matter what command is. So we have to not only prepare for the R command, let's start preparing stuff that we can, anything that we can prepare ahead of time that might be useful, we're going to prepare as long as we have the hardware to do it. 
So we're going to sign extend the operand encoded in bits 0 to 15, i.e. the 16 bits of the offset. In other words, we have that offset, perhaps. Perhaps it's not an R type. Perhaps it's an I type. And if it's an I type, we have the last, the right 16 most bits are the uh, either the immediate value or the offset in an, in a load word or the branch address. But whatever it may be, we're going to sign extended. Right? We may not need this. This is called just in case. We are doing things just in case. Just in case it turns out to be a branch or a load word. So let's look over here. And what do we see? We see that the command, the 0 to 15, you see 11 to 15 go into this multiplexer. In case that's the, um, that's the RT, or the RD. That's the RD. But, all, and also the 0 to 5, which could be the function if it's an R type, go into the ALU controller, which we discussed, which we discussed in the single cycle. But, there's a, but also those 0 to 13, to 0 to 15 bits, those 16 bits. See, it says instructions 0 to 15. They also come down here. And not only do they go to this way, not only five of them continue here, but all 15 continue, all 16, sorry, six of them continue here. And all, but all 16 go into this sign extender thing. And this sign extender will turn the 16 into 32. So we've already signed, extended the um, result, the, 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 the thing. So we have that all ready for the next cycle. That's what we say here. We are going to sign extend. Now, oh, also, in step two, a jump address is also is always calculated for a branch instruction, even if the instruction is not a branch. So we're also going to do stuff we need for a branch. That's sign extension. Now, was, is necessary for the branch also. Um, the jump address will only be used if the instruction is a branch, but we calculate it just in case. We will call the jump address target, or, or ALU out. The ALU will calculate the jump address, and it will be saved to the target ALU out register. It'll be PC plus sign extended offset, shifted left. So let's look at that. So what's going on here is, as we said, we've already signed extended in this cycle. Still in this same cycle, we're going to shift it left. And we're, that means we multiplied it now by four. And we're going to shove it up into this multiplexer. And we're going to put on this multiplexer three. So it chooses this value to come out of this. Before we said, um, before we said that the four was hard coded. One was chosen, and the four was hard coded. Now we're in a new cycle. Where that was cycle one. Now we're in cycle two. So we can use the ALU again, and we're going to use it this time with three on the control line, which means that whatever is calculated here, which is the thirty-two bit shifted left sign, ex, you know, sign extended uh, offset, and we're going to put that into the ALU, and we're going to add it with with what? with, well, if it's a jump, if it's a branch, we need to add it to the PC, right? A branch is always relative to wherever the PC is, as we saw, as we see in this slide. Um, no, this slide. PC plus the sign extended shift to the left. So where is the PC coming from? Well, in the previous one, we already added the PC went all the way over here, and the PC is for plus. His PC is incremented by 4. Now, the PC value is coming all the way on this line. Now we understand why this dark line here is in existence. It comes down here into this multiplexer, and the controller here will choose 0, and it will choose 3 down here. Oops. And it will choose 3 down here. So 0 up here, 3 down here. We're going to get the offset plus the PC going into the LU, and it's going to calculate the result and we're going to store it in the ALU out. So we have a potential jump address. And we've already calculated in case it's a branch. So we have that address to go to. Now, and it's going to be stored in that register. And now the end of the cycle is reached. But we've got the result we want. And it's not going to be lost because it's in a register. 
It'll be how long in that register? At the beginning of the next cycle, it'll be in that register. It could be that by the end of the next cycle, this ALU will have been used and we've overwritten it, but that doesn't matter. We're going to use it at the beginning of the cycle. We can think about the cycle as having a certain amount of time, a certain duration. So the beginning of the cycle, it'll have the result that we need for the branch. And that's going to be very good, so that we can finish the branch up quickly. And we explained this. The target, or the ALU out, is equal to PC plus sign extended offset. Yo, in, wonderful. Now, we're in cycle three. We now know what command we have. Ah, we have reached a crossroads. We have reached a fork in the road. We have now been able to, the, 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 the controller has now gotten the operation code, the op code, and he knows whether it's a branch or an add. So now instead of doing the same thing for every command, we're going to now differentiate. And what are we going to do? Well, there are four possibilities. Either it's an R type, which we'll deal with first, or it's a load word or a store word or a load byte, and a store byte, etc. Or it's a branch command or it's a jump. So again, four is the R type, the accessing of memory, a branch or a jump. So if it's an R type, what are we going to do? The ALU, we have to keep now in our heads all these things that have gone on up to now. The ALU performs an action on operation a, on operands A and B. Formally, the result of the ALU is A B. So now, if it's an R type, we're going. We've already read if in, in in stage two. Remember, stage one was fetch. Stage two was uh, getting the memory from the register file. If you don't believe me? Here, see, A equals register. B equals register whatever was in the register file. So now we're in stage three. We've got that value over here and we're going to use it. Well, if it's an R type, we have got to add A and B together or subtract A and B or whatever operation is required. So we're going to set this multiplexer to one, this multiplexer to zero, and the A value is going to come running through into the ALU and the B value will come running through into the ALU. And now we're going to use the ALU controller to tell the ALU what to do, add or subtract, and he will produce the result into this register, the result register. That's for the add. Now, how will the ALU decide what to do? Well, there are two ways. If it's an R type, we know that the function command is what tells it. So the function instruction, instruction 0 to Five, that's the rightmost section of the operation. Well, we know that that's where the function sits. That's coming straight from the instruction register. And remember, now we have this register here. He's been locked. He's storing this data all along. So even though we're in the third cycle, we still have that data. That was from, we still have that information from the instruction register telling us what is the function code. And if the function code is, I think, 32, then it's add. So that 32 is coming along these five bits, coming into the ALU controller. Maybe it's not 32. Um, probably it's not 32, whatever. It's whatever number it is for add is coming over here. And ALU controller says, oh, it's an add command. He sends out the necessary lines to the ALU controller to tell them what to do. Because remember, this is I, I, have an, I only have three lines coming in here. And here's six lines. I don't want all six lines going into there. The ALU, it's only have, it's three lines is enough to tell them what to do. These uh, six lines come into the ALU controller, but he sends only three forward to tell him what to do. Okay, that's the basic idea of what to do in stage three for an R command. What about if it's a load word or store word? So we've got to access the memory. The ALU is going to compute the effective memory address by adding the offset to the RS. So let's just remind ourselves of that. I'll quickly, uh, sorry to waste your time for a second. Let's type MIPS instruction reference.
Sorry, here is just a second. So here we go. And we want to talk about a branch. No, sorry, a store word or a load word. So let's look for a store word. There's a load word. Okay, a load word. Here, look at the load word. It says, take the S, which is, as you see here, see the S here? That There's five, this five S's here. Those are the five bits that indicate what, is, what this is. If this is like register number 30, then this five bits will be um, 30. This is register number eight, and these five bits will be eight. So that is the location. That first section is the RS. So the RS needs to be added to the offset to compute which word I want to load into the T register. Notice the T is the RT, is the next five bits. Okay, so let's go back. And let's say that we have to calculate the effective memory address by adding the RS, Dafka. You know, as we said, the RS is the exact one that we want. We need to add it to the offset. So let's go over here. And where is the RS? Well, the RS is the first one. So that's what we've read in stage two into the A. In other words, we've, we've got it. It's true that we've got the RT in here, but that's not, we're not interested in that one. We've got the RS over here. Whatever the contents of red, of that register, they're already in A. So on this control line, we're going to light up one to tell that A to go into here. We need to add it to what? To the offset. Now the offset is only 16 bits and we need to shift it left and sign extend it. So we've got those 16 bits coming right through here and shifted left and they're coming right up here to this multiplexer. So this multiplexer is not going to be zero. He's not going to let the other register come in because we don't want to add those two registers together. That was an, an, a regular R type. Now we want to add the register, the first register, the one over here, with this. So we're going to put three on this control line. And that's going to tell this multiplexer to let these bits come right on through. So the, the sign extended, the 32 bits of the offset will come in and we'll have the offset added to the register content, which is our pointer to our array, let's say. And the sum of that will go into the ALU out. And that will tell us what we need to load for the next cycle. We're just getting the, the actual address. We're computing the actual address because we had a pointer and we need to add to it. We do, need to do pointer arithmetic. And the ALU is going to help us do that. We store the result in our register and it's ready for the next cycle. That's if it was a load word. Now we're going to talk about a branch. If it was a branch command, well, we already had the branch in step two, the jump address was stored in the target register. The ALU determines if the A and B are equal. So, and by subtracting, so let's go over here. So we've already got in the ALU out the jump address. Remember, we if it was an R type, we didn't add it. But if it was a, I'm sorry, in stage two, we have already, let's go back to stage two and let's look at it for a second. In step two, a jump address is always calculated for the branch instruction. And we said that we that the target is equal to the PC plus the sign extended offset two. So this output already has in it this sign extended plus the offset, plus, uh, sign extended offset plus the um, register, plus the um, PC, sorry, plus the PC. Remember the PC came, we talked about that, the PC came through here. We have a zero on this line and we have here a three 
And it, we already had in stage two the result of that computation. Now we get to use the ALU again. And what we're going to do now is take, we're going to set a one on this line so that the A will come through. And we're going to set a zero on this uh, multiplexer so that the B will come through. And now we have a one here, a zero here. We have the A and B coming in. And we're not going to do addition, we're going to do subtraction. Now this is the way, this is the clever way of determining, of deciding whether something is equal. If you take seven minus, for example, if it's seven and the other one is seven, then they're equal. So what do we do? Seven minus seven is zero. Oh, if, if we get a zero, then it's equal. What if it's like seven and a hundred? So we get seven minus a hundred is negative 93. That's not zero. So in this case, we're actually not interested in the, um, result of the addition or of the subtraction. We're only interested in whether it's zero or not. So we have a special line coming out of the ALU called the zero line, which when it's one, it means the result of the computation was zero. So if we did subtraction and we got a zero, this will be a one. And that means they're, it means they're equal. And if we did the subtraction and we, and we got like negative 93, then this will be, then the zero line will be zero. It means we didn't get equality. We also, there's not written here, but there's also another line here. I don't know why it's not written here, but the, in this diagram, there should be another line coming in here to lock this one, just like we had a, lo a locking line over here to tell it not to overwrite. So the result of this ni negative 93 doesn't interest us. We don't want that to go into this uh, register here. So we can actually lock this register with a control line here. So that's not writable. And what we are interested in is the zero. So we did this, we do this as subtraction. And we still have the result of where to jump to. And the subtraction goes up here and over here. And if it's a one, that's true. And this is an AND gate. Now, if, if this control line is also a one, which, which, which it always will be in this case, in this stage, in this, for this command, if it's a branch command, we're going to light up a one here. So we get one and one, and that's true, which means that this or will get a one over here, which means it'll also be true. Because an or, it just needs one one to be true. So it's going to come over here and it's going to say, enable the PC to be changed. That's the enable line. So it's going to be a one over here. And that one means you're writable. If this zero line w was a zero indicating that they were not equal, that I didn't get zero as the result, I got negative 93, then this will be zero false. The zero plus a one will be zero. This will be zero. Now this PC write line will be also always zero. So zero and zero is going to be zero. So this will be locked. So the PC will not be writable. Now, so whether it's writable or not writable is determined by whether this was equal. Well, what is it going to be? What's going to be written to it? Well, whatever's on this line. Let's go back and look at this line. This line is, oh, it's the ALU result that we computed before in stage two, where to jump to. So, Right, because we added together the PC over here plus the offset over here, and we got the result. So now we're going to, on this multiplex, we're going to light up line number one. See, this goes here to one. So we're going to light up zero, one on here, so two bits, to tell it to let this line go through. So this line will come through now. So now this line is sitting here waiting at the door of the PC to be written. And depend, and if this was zero over here, then this and and or whole setup will enable it to be written. And if it was not zero, then it will be locked and it won't be written. Now, if we do write, that means we've changed the PC. That means the PC is no longer wherever it was supposed to be, which is plus four. It'll be like plus a hundred or plus some other number, whatever the offset was. So, so we've now effectively done our branch because that's all a branch is. A branch is just changing the PC saying, now do execute line, you know, 100 instead of line 50. So we've done that by changing the pointer to where it's pointing to whenever the, whenever the whole hurrah, whenever the whole uh, instruction finishes, he'll be on the correct, on the 50th place if they're equal. So we, we've actually finished the branch. So let's go back here. And the branch is actually finished because we've transferred to the PC the um, new address if the result is zero. Of course, if it was different from zero, then the PC will remain PC and PC and R and four. Now, the fourth possibility is that it's a jump command. If it's a jump command, 
What do we got to do? Well, remember how the jump is constructed. A jump is the six bits of the operation plus 26 bits for the offset. Just want to remind ourselves quickly. No, the jump is up. Sorry. There. Jump. Here we see jump target. The target is at place these 26 bits here. Now, notice that the um, first six bits are the actual opcode. Right, the four bits plus one zero, so that's two. Uh, that's the two is the opcode, and then all these I's are whatever I write in my command. That's that's the location I want to write to, that I want to jump to. And remember, we're not adding it to the PC. We're we're actually, if you look here, it says we're anding it, which is correct. Um, we're anding it with F, and then whatever the command is, whatever the place is. Let's, let's look at the um, diagram again. So jump command is PC set to four bits of the PC. We, we discussed this when we discussed the jump command. The jump command is the PC plus four bits. Sorry, the first, the leftmost four bits of the PC are appended, are prefixed to the 26 bits of the jump plus two zeros at the end. There's, it's, it's left shifted. That's what this means, left shifted by two, which is the same as adding two zeros to the right. So that's what we got to do. So let's see if we do that. So here it is. And the command is still sitting here. And we have to find a line that says 26 bits. So look, or look at this 26 here. So this 26 is coming straight from the instruction. So in other words, in addition to all of these sec subsections of the instruction going to all these different places. Also, the whole large group of 0 to 26, 25, 0 to 25, all of those bits are also spliced in and are wired to go up on this line and to come, see it says instruction 0 to 25, they're, in, they're, 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 they're brought all the way down to this shift left to operate. This is a unit, which all it knows how to do is whatever it gets, shifts it left two spaces. So it adds two zeros to the right, which is effectively multiplies it by four. And we get 28 bits out. Now those 28 bits come into this multiplexer. So those bits came through right to here. But those were only the 28 bits. We need another four. So if you notice this line here from the PC, it's coming here. This line looks like uh, okay, this is all the PC coming into here, but of the notice it's a little bit thinner line here. This is just four bits are spliced off, and those bits are bits. So it says here twenty eight to thirty one. Now there is the four leftmost bits of the PC. They're spliced right in, and they're added. They're put right alongside, parallel to these twenty eight bits. So we have a grand total of thirty two bits coming straight into number two entrance entrance of this multiplexer. So we've now got the jump address. We've got the four bits plus the, shi the shifted uh, part of the jump. In other words, we took the 26 bits from the, from the actual instruction. We turned them to 28 bits by shifting them left. We added four bits from the PC, and it comes right into this multiplexer. All we have to do is light up uh, one zero two on this line, and that result is going to come all the way around into the PC. And once the PC has got the new address, we've done a jump. So this is an unconditional jump. It's actually the easiest command. We just splice in some lines, and we've got, we don't have any logical gates, and just comes right out with the new PC that we want to go to, and we don't have to check if anything is equal. It's not a conditional jump. It's an unconditional jump. Okay, so now let's see. We have finished the final four, the final option of the third stage. Remember, we're only doing one of these four options depending on which command. If it was a jump, we finished. If it was a branch, we finished. If it was an R type or a load store word, we didn't finish. So let's see. So if the, in the fourth cycle, we call it the memory cycle. This cycle will be done only one of three options, the load, the load or the store, or the R type. And all other types have been completed, as we already said. So the R type, let's talk about the R type. The result 
has already been computed in step three, and it's sitting there in the ALU out register. Um, now we're going to write it to the right register wherever the RD tells us to, which means in, in mathematical notation we say the, re the register file is going to be written to at location whatever is in the, the IR register at place bits 15 to 11 with the result that we got in the ALU out. Let's just see that in the picture. In other words, we've already got the result of the addition in this ALU out. Now we need to write it to the register, to the right register. Where? Well, remember, here's the instruction register. We still have that because remember, we've locked it. So we have the, this is the RS, the RT, and then the RD is the final set. And look, that comes down. Look, all 15 go down here. But of those, sorry, all 16, all 0 to 15. But of those 11 to 15, which is those five bits of the RD, they come right into this multiplexer. So all we have to do is tell the controller to light one on this multiplexer so that the RD will go into the right register field, which was, which as we learned when we learned the register file, that is where we tell the register file where to write to, not what to write to, but just where to write to. That, and that's, of course, the five bits. Five bits tell it the address of which register to write to. We still need 32 bits of data. Oh, so that's got to be on this line. That's what we want to write. And that, as we said, we already computed it over here. It's going to come down this dark line, go up, up here into this multiplexer. And this multiplexer will be set to zero so that it will continue on in here. And we've written the data. We have finished the R type. That's the end of the R type. What about the store word? Well, the address was computed. We need to store word. What does that mean? We need to take something from a register and put it into data memory. So the address was already computed in stage three. And that address is going to be sent to the right address lines of the memory unit. So let's see that in the diagram. The address we computed here, and it's sitting here in the ALU out. We computed that in the third stage. Now that line is going down, 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 all the way around. And up here, we're going to set this multiplexer to 1, so that the address to write to is already sitting there at the address entry for the memory unit for the four gigabyte to access four gigabytes. Now we just need to put the data on this line. Well, where's the data going to come from? Let's follow it backwards. We see it's going to come right from here, from B. Now B is the RS, RT, sorry, B is the RT, RS, RT. So the RT line is coming right through here. Those are the second set of bits. And they're coming right in here and they're the content of that register is 32 bits coming out on this B line and coming out on this line on read data 2 into the register and out of the register and straight down this line and into the data to be written to memory. And we finished. That is a store word also completed in the fourth stage. Now we just have the load word. The load word is going to take one more cycle, but let's see what it does in the fourth cycle. The address computed in stage three is sent to the read address memory unit. Okay, so let's go back to the diagram. We still have an address computed, and it's going to go to the... Uh, and that same computation is going to go here to the same place. That, that same address is going to write to the same place, and we're going to light up one here, except when before we were trying to write data, which meant that on the read line there was a zero and on the write line there was a one, now there's going to be a one on the read line and a zero on the write line. So it's going to read the data. So the, the, this is the address is going to come out here and boom, out of the data memory, of the memory data is going to come running the contents of that place, of that address in memory. And it's going to go into the, now we're going to finally use this register. It's not going to go in, it, it, this is going to still be locked. We're not going to overwrite our instruction. 
so it's not going to go in here. Even though the line brings it there, it's going to be locked. The instruction register. But the me data memory is never locked. It's going to go straight into this register. And that's what we want to write because this is a, a load word. We got it from memory. Now we need to load it into a register. And that is sitting here on this uh, memory unit, on this memory data register. And the next cycle, we're going to actually write it into the, the register file. Let's see that, how I describe that. Here, we say the data read is put into the memory data lines, the memory unit, memory data. In other words, the memory is, is going to be the memory of the ALU result. Whatever of what we had is going to go into the data memory, which is the data re memory register. And here is the uh, final slide uh, to explain the write back. This is only for the load commands, load word, load byte, load half. The memory data retrieved in stage four, which we just got, is sitting in that memory data register, is now written to the RT. How? By using the RF, the register file. And that's what we saw. That's what we see in the diagram here. It's going to come straight out here on this, on this, um, multiplexer. We're going to light up one so that this data gets through to the right data. Which register will it write to? Well, it's going to write to whatever is in RT. So RT is coming in on this line. And it's also going, it's going here, it's true. But it's also going down here. Remember, it's still here. We haven't overwritten this. So it's coming in here. And on this multiplexer, we're going to light up zero so that it makes its way down to the right register, which is where we want to write it to, the RT. So the RT is sitting here telling us where to write this data to. And the data itself is coming in from from zero from the memory data register and it's being written into the register. And we've completed the RF, sorry, we've completed the um, load word command. Load word is the longest of the, of all the instructions. It takes five cycles to do. And we've written it into the register that was requested. Um, so that is the basic idea of the uh, multi-cycle for all possible instructions. We saw that some instructions take three to five steps depending on the type. The hardware doesn't know until the end until the end of the third step what instruction it actually has. Thus, the first two steps are the same for everybody, and only in the third step do we make a fork in the road and do different things. Um, the data is always written at the end of the clock cycle. And clock cycle, and we perform optimistic steps. Sometimes we perform steps early on that in the end are going to be pointless, but they don't cost us anything, so we do them on the optimistic assumption that maybe we will need them. Um, and all steps, of course, use the data from the previous steps by means of uh, registers, right? We have to add registers. Let's add that, by means of registers. We need to have extra registers to store the data from the previous cycle. Uh, so we see now that it can take up to five cycles of the clock to do a command. Some commands we'll be able to finish in only three cycles. Okay, that is the multi-cycle uh, configuration data path. That's the data path in the multi-cycle of the MIPS architecture. Hope this was helpful. Um, please leave comments if you have any questions. Thank you.